Well, I definitely encourage people, urge people. I'm very vehement about it. Not to do yoga. Mm. It's very dangerous. I get phone calls from all over the world of people who have attended yoga classes and had a spontaneous kundalini awakening wow. that gets out of control. And of course, it's just a demonic oppression or possession that they're going through and they need prayer for deliverance. But uh, it's not it, it, it's not a simple matter that can be dismissed mm -hmm. by, oh, I'm just... I, I'm just tuning up my physical body. There's some <laughs> there, there's some factors that are very important. Like I've been on some of the websites of supposed Christian yoga yep. groups yep. where they have pictures of someone sitting in a lotus position with their hand like this. Well, most people don't realize that's what's called a mudra. Mm. And a mudra is a symbolic representation with your hands or with your body of a, a mystical uh, idea or concept. Hmm. And that particular uh, that particular form, let me try and get it in the camera. Right. Yeah, the, the forefinger represents your individual soul, which Hindus call Atman. Hmm. And the thumb represents the oversoul, which Hindus call Brahman. Hmm. And Brahman incidentally is an impersonal force, not a personal God. Mm -hmm. And and so you're connecting with a false idea just by making that yeah. symbol with your hand. And what that is, is an actual invocation that Brahman will manifest in your life where you will have this awakening into God consciousness. Mm -hmm. And once again, that term sounds really desirable. Well, I want to be conscious of God. <laughs> yeah. But within a Hindu framework, God consciousness means a, a conscious awareness that you are God, mm -hmm. yeah. which is the absolute opposite of the truth. Amen. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely satanically inspired. Yeah. And so that's just one example. Yeah. I've also... Uh, I've also known people that claim to be involved in Christian yoga mm -hmm. that believed in the chakras mm. and they meditated on the chakras. And of course, that's not common knowledge, probably to a lot of your listeners. So I might need to explain the term yeah. uh, within most new age circles or Hindu circles. They believe in seven energy centers that are like a uh, whirling disc, so to speak. Mm. Uh, position down your spine. That's all why you the way see the circles in the body. The base of your spine. Is that why you see uh, the circles on people, like that's showing the right, chakras? Right. The third eye. Yeah. The third eye is the one most people are familiar with, yeah. which is supposed to be one of the seven chakras. Mm. And uh, if you, uh, each one of those chakras is assigned to a different Hindu deity, and and they have different functions. And if you supposedly meditate on that chakra, you can enhance your spiritual maturity in a certain area. There's a lot of application. But the scary thing about it is if you believe in chakras, it's inextricable from a belief in the kundalini. And the kundalini is that latent uh, presence of divinity. And, and I'm not talking about my beliefs now. I'm talking about what I believed as a <laughs> yoga teacher. It was the dormant divinity within every human being that I was taught by Yogi Bhajan was coiled like a serpent at the base of the spine. Mm. That's why it's called the Kundalini, because Kundalini means serpent power. Isn't serpent and in the Bible a bad thing? <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> yeah. uh, I, I think, think so. I think <laughs> serpent had a whole lot yeah. to do yeah, with yeah. the fall of humanity. <laughs> and uh, yeah. the serpent uh, grows into the great red dragon of Revelation chapter 12. He's wow. called that old serpent, the yeah. devil. And so he, uh, the serpent is representative of the highest force of evil in the universe. Yeah. How frightening is that? Yeah. And you're doing yoga, you're which trying to means awaken that. union with yeah. God. The word, the word yoga means union with God. It, mm. it literally means yoke, but the implication symbolically is being yoked with God, being in union with God. And so... Uh, if a person believes in the chakras, then they believe in uh, the kundalini, whether they realize it or not. And at a certain point during your pranayama and asanas and all the other exercises you do in yoga, 
And most people are very familiar with that terminology if they're involved in a yoga class at all. Then there's supposed to be this moment of awakening mm -hmm. where the serpent strikes. And when the serpent strikes, this serpent power goes up through the spine to the forehead and, and either merges with the crown chakra or the third eye and a person goes off into God consciousness. Well, that's nothing more than demon possession. I have known incidents where people experience what's called Shaktipat. And Shaktipat is uh, where a guru or a swami touches you in some way. Uh, sometimes they use different means, different methods. They may touch a disciple with a feather or with their hand or breathe on them or whatever mm -hmm. to impart an awakening of the Kundalini. Yeah. And, and so uh, at times there are manifestations like shaking or uncontrolled physical movements. Um, and at times even uh, speaking in tongues and yet it's a wow. demonic a false tongue. tongue yeah. I personally have experienced being baptized in the Holy Spirit as a Christian. I did a year after I was saved and I spoke in tongues and it is a language of worship. But the enemy can even mimic and counterfeit that. And a counterfeit is not good unless it looks almost exactly like yep. the real. Amen. Yep. And and so uh, there's, there, there's a lot of people that swear by yoga and I, don't mean that in the sense of swear words, yeah, yeah. but they say there's yeah. nothing wrong with it. Yep. I've had people tell me that I go to yoga class. I've never been defiled. I've never been mm -hmm. uh, mixed up or messed up in false dem uh, demonic manifestation. Yep. And when they chant uh, Om, when they chant the word Om, I just say the word Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I look at them with shock. Uh. I say, and you don't offer an explanation of the falsehood of what's going on yeah, around you? Yeah. I said, because the word Om is, well, actually, in the Hindu culture, in the Hindu religion, it's stretched out in pronunciation where you've got three sounds, A-U-M, and A represents Vish, uh, Brahma, rather, the creator God, and uh, the U represents uh uh, Vishnu, the preserver God, and the M represents Shiva, the destroyer God. And when you quote, yeah. uh, when you say that in mantra-like fashion over and over again, uh, you're again invoking those yeah. three deities. Yeah. Uh, and what Brahma, does light Vishnu, have in common with darkness? To yeah. manifest in your body. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had a friend who was going for yoga certification. She wanted to be a yoga teacher. She was a Christian. She thought there was nothing wrong with it. And they told her that it would not conflict with her faith to become a yoga teacher. Mm. And so she's going through all these initiation classes. And she got to one where they were teaching on chanting mantras. And this guy tried to lead the whole class in the chanting of a mantra. It was words in Sanskrit. And she didn't know what they meant, so she didn't participate. And uh, she went up to the guy after the class and said, uh, I can't chant something unless I know what it means. Yeah. And he said, well, those words mean I give my soul to Shiva, <laughs> which is the destroyer in <sighs> Hinduism. Wow. And we know who the destroyer Amen. is. And it's a different concept. It's not a deity. The destroyer is Satan. So she said, I'm out of here. I'm never going to come back again. Amen. And so it, if you are to participate in a yoga class, where things like that happen and you don't oppose it or you don't reveal the falsehood of it, that is compromise on a major level. Yeah. And that's like that that's similar to walking in an idol temple yeah. and worshiping Jesus while other people bow down yeah. to a yeah. false idol and you're accepting that as something legitimate or at least you're not confronting yeah. it. I've tried to explain to people not to do yoga. It's not because, oh, we're trying to take your fun out of it and we don't want you to lose weight and burn these calories during hot yoga. We don't want your back to be okay. It's like what you've said, there's other ways without having to give in to these spirits and this demonic basically presence. And so I think that's what- There's hot cycling. I, th I think these people <laughs> want to hear this is that we're not like God, like God, he doesn't tell us not to do these things because he hates us and he's trying to suck all the fun out. He's doing it because he's a jealous God and he's protecting us. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love in this pamphlet that you have, the seven reasons I no longer practice yoga. Like this is something I'm thankful for. Now I can like, instead of arguing with someone like, hey, here's this, like, yeah. because hopefully they see that 
it's truly that if you want a deeper relationship with God, you can't serve two masters. Like I think it's in Matthew 6, 24, like you can't serve God and money. It's the same thing. You can't serve a Hindu thing, right? Cause that's what yoga, it's like Hindu and God. And so I'm, that's why I'm just thankful for that. You made this little yeah. mini book because it makes it so much easier yeah. for people like me. So awesome. many people contacted me and they would ask and I'd have to go through the yeah. whole yeah. spiel yeah. over and over again. And I thought I need to get this out to people in a yeah. way that's easier for them to absorb. Yeah. And my seventh uh, point that I make in the mini book is this, and I think it's a very important one. Just suppose that everything is benign. Mm. Uh, or seemingly benign in a yoga class. The teacher is a committed Christian. Yeah. Worship music is played. Mm. No one chants. No one uh, gives any kind of acknowledgement to Hindu deities. Uh, that is purely a physical exercise regimen. Is it still wrong? And I tell people, yes, yeah. Yeah. because you're calling it yoga. And by calling it yoga, you are endorsing something yeah. that is very dark at its core. Mm -hmm. And even if you've stripped it of all the negative influences that you think uh, you need to strip it of, it's still making a statement. And someone who is weak in the faith will see, oh, Pastor Craig goes to a yoga class. Yeah. Well, you might go to a, a hot yoga class where they <laughs> never mention meditation. They never mention some spiritual aspect. Well, then yoga must be right if Pastor Craig mm -hmm. goes there, mm -hmm. and then they go headlong into the philosophy behind it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I believe it's very important for people not to be supportive of yoga in any way. And one way I explain it is this, when I pray, or let me take it a different direction. When I meditate, there is a biblical form of meditation. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's not emptying Amen. your mind Amen. to Amen. have Amen. mystical experiences, yeah. but rather slowing your mind down and then focusing on the word of God and very prayerfully and worshipfully reading the word, pondering its meaning, inviting the Holy Spirit to give you interpretation. And so when I meditate within a biblical Christian framework, I hope to transcend uh, this physical world and have an encounter with God. Mm. But I'm not going to call it transcendental meditation. Amen. 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 Yeah. Even though I'm yeah. meditating and I want to transcend. Because just the use of that term Amen. identifies it with something that's very anti-Christian, mm -hmm. very anti-cross. The founder of Transcendental Meditation was very strong in saying that the cross was the uh, tragic death of a good man, but it had no power to forgive anyone of their sin. So uh, by using that terminology, I'm identifying Amen. with someone very non-Christian, non-biblical, and I would derail somebody this week spiritually. Yeah. So there are Christian alternatives. I have friends. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I have one friend who has her testimony uh, on my website, thetruelight.net. I post a lot of testimonies there, and we just opened that website up a couple months ago, and I'm really, really excited. We've gotten over, uh, we've gotten downloads uh, from over 40 nations. People oh, have gone there and good. downloaded my story. I've got my, my story that I'm sharing here on this uh, interview in this booklet yeah. here, uh, The Highest Adventure, Encountering God, yeah. and it's so, absolutely free. It's totally free. All That's you got to do is come to the true light down, uh, the true light, uh, excuse me, the true light dot net and download it. And it's yours and share it with anybody you want to. And so anyway, uh, I m mentioned uh, in, in my uh, sharing of that particular book, I mentioned uh, some Christian alternatives like uh, the friend I mentioned that uh, left the yoga certification course, she started a group called Holy Fit, mm. W-H-O-L-Y-F-I-T, Holy Fit. Uh, and it's all Christians that didn't want to be contaminated by Amen. the yoga thing. Amen. And then uh, on the website, this is why I mentioned the website, I also have the testimony of Lorette Willis and Lorette Willis was a Hatha yoga teacher. Hatha is the simplest form of yoga, physical exercises. But it is the third, and then pranayama is the fourth 
step toward enlightenment uh, taught by Patanjali in Hinduism. Mm -hmm. And so the physical yoga and the uh, breathing exercises are steps you take toward uh, this experience of being liberated spiritually, uh, according to them. But anyway, she was a Hatha Yoga teacher and then got saved and knew she couldn't teach Hatha Yoga anymore. Mm -hmm. She had to give it up. And, and so for two years, she didn't do anything. And then she started something called Praise Moves so that Christians would have an alternative. Amen. And so there are some groups out there for people that think, well, I just want a low impact regimen so that I can tune up my body. You don't have to compromise your faith and, yeah. and have that approach yeah. physically. Yeah. You, you can do body some things that are free from all the contamination. 